What's up, guys? Yeah, we got a couple of downloads recently. I love like it's a big deal. I feel like we've gotten famous at this point if we've gotten this season. Yeah. Hey, I'm just so happy if like five people listen to this, even if it's like two people who aren't my mom, even though I love if my mom listens to this mom, I'm sure you're listening. <laughs> but it is cool to know that there are people out there listening and I enjoy listening to you, Mike. All right here. Right here. I like be if, if people are watching, you got our Santa hats on right now. That's also a lot of you. Yeah, it's personal. The starting cast in the background. Actually, now that I think about it, I see the the stocking, and then the reindeer. Yeah, oh, yeah, another hat. Oh my like, goodness! Oh yeah, Green hat sleeve on his chair behind him, and then Santa and his reindeer. We we have lights up in the room. It is. Yeah. Like, it was Christmas time, like the, we, we had the kids setting up, but this year, you know, I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old and they did the whole Christmas tree, except for like the top half, like it, it, it's Christmas time. Yes. Yes. So we're going to do like a random show today and in, in some ways, but also talking about the time of year it is in relation to the fit quest, basically. Do you, we'll see if we update about our fit quest, but I kind of want to ask some questions or talk about some things. And random way this time. Okay. All right. Let's do it. This sounds fun. We had a couple things, right? So we had, let's see, Charles Dickens Christmas story. Cause I'm seeing that a lot, but I was also thinking of like Christmas stories you're seeing a lot or Christmas themes you're seeing a lot. Basically, okay. Okay. if that makes sense, you know, it doesn't just be Charles Dickens. And then we also have decorations, strength strategies for the winter time and adapting to the change in weather. And then like where we are in different areas of the country, are we thinking? Yeah, I think that makes a huge difference. Yeah. I was thinking just kind of where you live, like it's freezing right now where we are. Right. And then you go on Reddit and like, I go on like the golf Reddit and it says, Hey, we're golfing and it's 70 degrees and sunny out here. Yeah. You know, so it just makes you think a little bit if people have you know, an extra five months of warmth or vice versa. Maybe it's only cold or only warm, you know, like that, like different things. I, I think that can really affect not only golf, but like your health, how much you go outside and exercise and stuff like that. So that, that was just kind of what was on my mind with that. Man, even some of my hardcore people right now who go outside, who like going outside in the cold, I mean, yeah. going outside as much as they would like lately. If it's cold, you have cold, wind, and rain. And if you have two or more of those, then it gets like miserable. But like if you have one, like if it's a warm rain, like that's that's a nice time to go out for a walk or something like that. Funny. Yeah. I feel like it overwhelms too many senses when you have cold, wind, and rain. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like you just cut. Just like I feel safe, I like feel that safe in an area that I would normally feel safe in. If I can't hear or see things well enough, you know? Right. And then there's like, and then there's the add of like the temperature change in my body, basically, and the discomfort that comes with that. Well, but just if you're used to walking down the sidewalk or walking down the path, and you don't have to worry about wind, rain, or cold. You're just walking. And now all of a sudden you have three of those hitting you at once. You know, if you're not very coordinated, I bet something like your walking pattern will probably change a little bit. You're going to be thrown off by the wind. And that's not to say what else is going on in your head about like, man, should I just go back home? It's so great. Like what is the point? What is the point of this? And to which I say, I would rather like do what I've been doing this week. I haven't been doing it all the time, so I'm not doing perfect, but like we march in place, you know, do some, do some, I've been doing some club work. This is a good time of the year to do some club work, go clubbing. Yeah. Um, and then we have a little, we come body. We have a body by Jake. We come bicycle. 
um, in our basement that I'll sit on and I'll play um, video games on, basically. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So getting some stuff done inside. Yeah. Okay. And we went puddle walks. We did go on puddle walks, which are, I would definitely recommend if um, if you have the ability to. You might have to just plan it so, like, the wind and the rain has died down so it's not as strong. Yeah. And then it wasn't as, I think we timed it pretty well. That it was a light rain outside. It was middle of the day, so the temperature wasn't too bad. Yeah. We were able to get out there and jump in some puddles and then shed. I like it. So you mentioned indoor stuff. So like clubs and you have your recumbent bike. What are some other good things that me and then all of us, everybody listening can do in the wintertime inside for cardio? Like that's, what are, what... that's a big one. Like if you have any stairs, like yeah. going up and down steps is a great one. Now, and I think somebody, you know, pe- like the fitness people would go, all right, what, well, walking down the steps can definitely affect your knees. You can no, go down the steps sideways. Okay. I was, I was going to ask you, what's some good tips for going downwards? I have like 20 steps right here. Yeah. And, you know, like my cardio has been weak, but I've been afraid of my knees a little bit. So what are some... Like, when you're stepping on the steps, see if you can actually use the arches of your feet more. Ideally, if you're stepping on a harder surface, you might want to put on some shoes that have some more cushioning. For mm-hmm. example, if it's more of a wooden surface and, and it, or carpeted surface, I would just stick to like bare feet if you can. Or try to use the arches of your feet. Try to use your glutes when you're going up the steps. Try to keep your center of gravity a little bit in front of you, if that makes sense. So is, is your heel really even hitting the ground on the way up? Or oh, some stuff. Yeah, most people's heels really are on steps most of the time. It's more like the arch of the foot, I would say, is where the load can be best. But like people will flat foot going up it, you know, and that'll put a lot of pressure on the knee. Going up. Yeah. Okay, okay. So make sure it's a good like toe to heel strike and probably not even getting on the heel very much and, and not locking your knees. Okay. Now what is like a, an intermediate ish, like workout? Like I'm thinking yeah. like three walks up the stairs and that or like maybe two or four walks up the stairs and then down left, down, right, down, left, down, right. And then what about like a jog? Can you jog up the stairs, I guess, or? You jog up the stairs. You could do some jumping jacks at the bottom and then go up the stairs. So get your heart rate up a little bit and then go up the stairs. Yeah. Jumping okay. jacks are another one lately. That's the theme. Man, I feel like I feel so old telling people to do jumping jacks. Dude, I feel so true. nostalgic in a way at this point. Like, Nobody sees j- jumping jacks, but my kid, my kid loves jumping jacks. And you know what? There was a while. Like, did they disappear? Like, why they disappeared? Right, right. Like, where do you see people doing jumping jacks? People attach themselves to like bigger things. Like, oh, like when they they change the old army PT test, and then they've also changed a lot about like schools PT tests and stuff like that. And I think when people think about the older, like the older training, the very first thing is jumping jacks. And like, cause that would be one of the first things you do to warm up. And I wonder if that's why no one does jumping jacks because we attach it to the things that have been changed so much. Yeah. Pull-ups are like that too. Okay. Yeah. Cause they're like, I don't want to do pull-ups. Why would I want to do pull-ups? No. I remember when they made me do pull-ups in that one pull-up test. I hear that story so in color. I mean, pull-ups are still one of my favorite things. I'm getting rid of my squat rack right now, uh, but I'm going to buy a hanging pull-up bar for my garage because you can just do so much stuff with it. I'll also connect a TRX to it. Yeah. So you know, do a bunch of TRX stuff to it. With exactly. It. Exactly. Now, just a, a bar up high. You know what I really like? I really like gymnastic bars. Have you seen those gymnastic ladders? How do those look? Oh my goodness. And I love wooden equipment too. A lot of them are wooden. They're 
Think of like a ladder with round bar spokes. The ladder, but the ladder is pretty wide. It's like four feet. Okay. Okay. Basically, I mean, the spokes are pretty close together. But like they're, they're about hand knuckle distance apart. Okay. And then at the top of the ladder, there's a part that comes out and has a pull up bar and a bar at the top of it. All right. So you can, you can put your feet on the ladder for graded pull-ups for changes in the amount of help you're getting from the less weights. Okay. But you can do a whole bunch of other movements with those bars in different positions and oh, you yeah. can anchor bands to it. We have one on the tiny house, actually on the outside of the tiny house. We have one in the house that we eventually set it up like you and you can get some up. We can get a bunch of really good stretches with it too, because you can grab at different areas and stretch in different ways. Like you yeah. can take down in front of it and put your feet up on it. You can okay. do L sits and handstand progressions with it because of the different foot positions. Okay. Gymnastics ladders for for upper bot. G- gymnastics ladders are just amazing, just for movement like abilities. I, if I see a gymnastics ladder in a gym, I'm like, that's a, that's a. S tier like grading that we might be on. <laughs> you but you, you remember that big piece of equipment at at that gym in Ashburn, and it had the ladders on the two sides, and it also had monkey bars going across. What was that? What I really liked about that is that on the side, the ladder they had ladder rungs that they. It doesn't sound yes. like it was that. It was close. similar yes. though. Yeah, but they were pretty. And I was able to do a bunch of different exercises and also a bunch of different stretches for people like right on those bars. And I thought it was pretty useful. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I like it. It was like a hexagon-esque cage jungle gym exercise thing. I loved it though. That was amazing. It was just a cool piece of equipment. And I can't believe I don't know the name of it because we even had to do like a certification for that. Yeah. Duh. So that's... Let's see, winter weather, right? Yes. Wait, we, do you want to talk about the winter weather? Mm, what else about winter weather? I would say, what, do we, what, do you, what am I seeing right now with winter weather? I'm seeing, mm, yeah, a lot of rain, a lot of people be, not being able to go out as much, so needing to go inside like we were talking about. And then I'm seeing... What's coming up winter weather wise? What to be prepared for? Okay. Like that. So we're only in the first few weeks of colder winter weather, you know? We haven't even at the longest night of the year yet. We haven't even reached the solstice yet. So we're going to be in winter for a bit. And because of that, it means that we're probably going to have like a maybe a wetter, colder winter that we might not be able to go out as much. So solidifying some routine now, like not expecting, you know, in some ways the weather to help in any way for you. And then thinking of ways that you can get out when the weather isn't ideal. Right. Maybe if if you really want to get out. Should I have a question. I mean, should we just go outside when it's 25 degrees and a little bit windy? I say if it's within your abilities to, and you want to go outside, I think you got to like nurture. The thing is with going outside with people who don't like to go outside, like you got to create the craving first, you know, or you're just yeah. like forcing and like horse to water, you know, but it's not going to drink. Basically like, you can go outside because it's good for you to go outside. It's not a good enough reason for them. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool. There's a bunch of excuses. The, some of them are valid. Some of them are more like excuses, basically. <laughs> but the big thing I think is that if you have that craving to go outside and it's something you know you like to do, but the weather is becoming an excuse. See if you can play a little bit ahead for it. 
or get things together that will make it easier for you. Because a lot of times for those kind of people, you're close enough to doing it that there's only a couple of little logistical obstacles in the way. If we just kind of think of it now, you can set yourself up really well. The other people, we got to build an actual craving for going outside. What's the point of going outside for you? And that's like, oh, that's like a discussion. Cool. You know? All right. Like, like, those are the hard gonna... cells. Like, <laughs> Mid January, we are going to go on a hike. So uh, there, this is the beginning of that. So you need to plan yeah. that, you know, plan that time and, and get your mindset into In January. 20, 20 degree, maybe some snow. We'll, we'll see. Do we go on like a horrible weather hike last year too, by the way? I think we, yeah, it was like in the mid December and it was, do you remember it? It was like at dawn and 50 mile per hour wind yes. and <laughs> like real, like these 200 foot tall trees were just right. for like looking like it were, they were going to fall onto the path. Yeah. Yeah. But both of our kids have been sick like the week before we were like under, under slept. I <laughs> think. I had, no, I had the flu. That was like my, you, one, you, the flu, though, you were getting the flu ready to, yeah. I was like wheezing on the, when I, my, I had like five layers on and like four layers underneath my outer layer were drenched uh, at the end because I was so sick. I was just sweating the whole time. Oh, I'm really sweaty, I'm really going to sweat. But I don't, I don't think either of us will ditch out c considering what, what we did last year. I'm not concerned with that at all. And the problem with being, well, for you, I think your well, Ari was like eight months old or something like that. Oh, and that was harder. Yeah. We were still in the first year then. You have to schedule a four hour getaway a month and a half in advance and you no matter if you're sick or underslept, you just got to go. Yeah. I'd go cool. or you will never go. The life suck that is the first year of childhood, I think, right. is the whole reason why the first birthday party is for the parents. Mm -hmm. Uh, man, so I have a decision about the cold. Right after this recording, I'm going to go, go play some golf and it's, Currently 33 degrees and 15 mile per hour winds outside. And, and, and so I too am questioning like, why should I even do this? What but, the point? What do we, but, we, because it's like, because it's winter time and I don't want to sit inside all winter. And even if it's cold outside, like we need to get ourselves out as much as we can. I'm not saying like, just go outside. Like we, what you were saying earlier, but. Uh, if you just said it's, it's so good, well, let's talk about why being outside is so good for people. I feel like that would be useful, right? I guess we'll go a little bit into the discussion, right? But go ahead. Let's go. I just want to put that there. You, so you're thinking about going to golf. Yeah. And I mean, I'm going to, so, but it's all about, it's all about preparedness. Okay. Yeah. So well, you have to, yeah, I mean, it's cold outside, guys. It's December. It, you know, it's, it's January. It's going to be cold. So, like, you have to get yourself psyched up. And I feel like that's, like, it's not even, like, you, a one-time thing. You have to think about it, and you got to get ready for it. And I'll, I'll have five layers on up top, and I'll have extra pairs of socks and two pants and all that kind of stuff. And I will feel great out there. And I know I'll feel great out there in 30 degree weather and 15 degree wind because I'll be prepared. Uh, only part of my face will be shown, um, you know, so I, I mean, I'll be ninja style on the course. How many people live in areas where it's cold for longer than five months out of the year or much colder than where we live? Like there's starving people in Africa. Come on. I'm glad about it. Well, that's the point is that when you live in a cold area, you're like, it's not cold, but like, like we're right on the line of like, if you go like two states down, it barely ever snows. Oh. And, you know, so like where we are, like it's warm, it's, it's nice to be warm, but then it gets cold and you really have to like change your mindset. I wonder how many golf courses there are in Canada. 
But Scotland is like the homeland of golf. Is it cold in Scotland or, or Scotland? Yeah. Fuck. Pretty damn cold in Scotland compared to Virginia for sure. We were in Ireland in the summer, like June, late mid to late June. And like it was cold in Ireland in June and especially Northern Ireland and there's columns above that. So true. true. Unless they're getting into really warm waters coming through. And I, I think you just get used to it though. Like if you live in that area and you're used to the wind and the cold, like that's your mindset and you just, you don't want to miss out in life if you don't go out. And so you have to go out when you live in those places. But what are you missing out on, Josh? What is this religious fervor you have about inside? Cause it's so good for you. Well, it, 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 so, well, let's just start with maybe some sun. How about that? Maybe just the fresh air, the non-recirculated air conditioning that you're breathing in your house. <laughs> like dust particles from your old skin that's just been floating around and through because you haven't changed the vent. <laughs> you know, that those two things alone are, 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 in my opinion, worth it to go out in the cold. Right. Okay. So some fresh air because, and even though it's cliche, like fresh air is a big deal, especially like at least a couple times throughout the day. So that way you're, you're like, it, if anything, like if you're just a meathead listening to this, you'll understand that like you have to take rest between sets. Like you can't just go basically and your, your lungs and your respiratory system will get a much needed rest between sets of being indoors with the same circulated manufactured air, basically. Unless the outdoors is a really bad breeding environment for whatever reason, like wildfires or stuff. And then it was just like, and, and when it is that way, you will definitely notice and people do notice and the public health agencies will announce that like your people are more at risk for this. Hospitalizations are going to go up for this. These areas are going to be impacted. Like it happens and it happens pretty quickly when that air quality goes down in an area and predictably. Right. Right. And even if it's just for like a little 30 minute, you know, rep or like a little 50, 15 minute walk, walk down, down and back. That's much better than just two sitting. minutes. Just give me two freaking minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes if you don't, because I know some of you are listening, don't, don't do it at all when it gets cold. Yeah, that's true. It takes 10 minutes to get ready, though. So you at least have the back porch and put a robe on, you know? Yeah. Like, you uh, in, the mor in the morning, in the morning, I run out to the car and my bare feet. No, no Just matter what. Little kick. Yeah. And my kids saw me doing that for a few days and they got brave uh, a couple of nights ago and they went outside in their bare feet in like 20 degrees or whatever. And I'm not saying for like a long time, it was like literally for 10 seconds and they ran inside like so fast. And in my head, I'm like, I love this because that's exact all I want. I'm not saying go be a crazy person and like go out into the, yeah. you know, like forever, just test it. Uh, like shock your body. You need to like, you need to try things. Yeah. Figure it out. And, uh, yes. And nowadays the pro I would say the reason why you do that is because you kind of have to interject and create those scenarios because they don't happen as commonly as I would say they have in our past, but we still need those things. And there's obvious health ramifications if you don't get those things, if you don't get enough exposure to those things. And it's more like an exposure, like frequency. Then an exposure dose bitch, I would say. Right. Exactly. And I think one of these things they talk about is cabin fever, right? And that's yes, just like cabin that. fever is real, dude. Seriously, people get it's, their edge. It's real on a low level and it's real high level, right? Like you can see people starting to get stressful when there's a bunch of people inside you when you're inside all the time. Like that, how often I just say, All right, guys, we're going for a walk. Yeah. And we get outside, you know, and we have a walk and then it's like, it's good then, you know, cause oh my goodness, especially for children, man. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 
they're still in an instinctual phase of growing, you know, and part of that instinct is reliant on an outdoors environment. Like, oh, oh yeah, that's capable, you know. I think I think you escape it at your peril, basically. But um, vitamin D, I guess, is another big one, right? You get vitamin D when they go outside. I mean, you can take vitamin D, I guess, which I've heard that before. What else is so good about out being outside? Like, there's like things that happen to people's brains when they go outside that aren't just related to their lungs, for example. There's things that happen for people's eyes when you go outside. Do you know that? They adjust differently because of the sun. Mm -hmm. they, they react more naturally to the sun. And they start to adjust to, like, your natural rhythms a little bit more. What else? Distance. There's a big one, especially for people on computers. Um, there's one, one I think is really useful for people to understand. Like, if you're looking at things really close to you for a lot of the day, you're bending parts of your eye to shape a more focused ability on things at that distance. But by bending it, you keep it from bending in the other direction, which is distance. Ooh, okay. So if you're looking at things close up, it's extremely useful for you to go out and look at things at a distance every once in a while to help keep that bending from getting too far in one direction. That makes sense. How do you do that? To go outside. Right. <laughs> and you look around and you well, find things maybe in the distance that are a little hard. And then you find things that are a little bit easier, but still in the distance. Like, like, the old piece. Piece. like tracking a little white ball. Exactly. Like pickleball. Everybody just need to do pickleball, join the cult, join the cult, join the cult. Or playing frisbee golf. Yeah. Exactly. Or going down the hike and stopping and looking out over a vista. Yeah. Those are all nice things in life, too. They're all they're around. Nice. <laughs> and so hard. To, it, we say they're nice because there's so many things that are nice about them. You don't want to have to list off all the nice things. Right. Right. And not because it's just cliche, like the cliche is there for a reason, I would say. Right. But, you know, I think one more thing about the cold is that what about just the general fact that you'll get used to it more? Like your body adapts to oh, cold. Yes. Yes. And, you were and, thinking about that. And, and so at the, you know, of course in December, it's going to feel cold, but you know, in January, February, if you've been outside for 30 minutes every day, then that 30 minutes by February is going to be uh, easy. It's going to be a piece of cake. Okay. I mean, I mean you, you know, the, like, when the shock is the highest, but if you get over the shock and you kind of acclimate, it'll, it'll make the rest of the time easier. That's I mean, 55 in the fall is cold 55 in the spring is warm why why do you think that is yeah it's because your adaptation yes exactly and if you can get outside a little bit more even in those cold times it'll help you be outside more when it is cold more normally right it's kind of obvious but it helps to hear it you know you know, it's also, you will, you made me think of when you were saying that, it, like the different cultures, did you ever hear of how Swiss daycare bears will put the babies out in bassinets and they're like swaddled and everything, but they'll put them out on cold days. No, I haven't. To build uh brown fat tissue. Oh, okay. That's pretty yeah. smart. Yeah. So, so the children, so because you can build a lot more brown, you brown fat when you're younger and that's the kind of you acclimate to cooler weather but it all has a lot of other health benefits to it Which i have heard cultures who do do that with babies yes but do expose them to cold when they're yes. young yeah exactly and that's not just the swiss culture yeah and there's other cultures that do that as well and the ones that are in the cold war to help them adapt to their environment more and they're more susceptible to adaptation than some places, some cultures do it in uh, like a, what seems like a much nicer way. Like it looks like they're in bassinets, you know, and the only thing that's really not covered is their, their face for the most part, but they got like a windshield and all that. 
but yeah, I think, I think you can do the same thing as an adult. I believe I just don't think the rate is as high, you know, for her, but I think you can build a resilience to it in like a, an actual mechanical way that's going to be helpful for your health. Later yeah, on. exactly. And I think it's just on a level where it's like the more you get exposure, like, so if you're in a cold area all the time, you're exposed a lot more. So right. you're, you're going to adapt more, but in a place like where it's cold for five months and warmish for seven months, I think it's just harder for our bodies to like, and I wonder if that is more beneficial or less beneficial. I guess it just depends on what you like, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's one of those, I don't know. It's hard when things are like seasonal changes because the earth goes around the sun are unavoidable no matter where you are on the planet. You just have different kinds of seasonal changes. I feel like because it's unavoidable, you basically have to either move to that seasonal change that works best for you or change your other things that affect how you acclimate to that season. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like learning how to wear more layers and all that. Like, yeah. Cause you're not going to change the seasons in so many ways, you know, so you got to adjust, be aware of how the seasons affect you and adjust around you accordingly. Unless you really can, ch the only way you really can change the seasons around you as much is by moving. You know, right, right. It's like your Florida, like your Florida friend who comes up to uh, to Virginia in the winter time. Uh, you know that person's gonna wear like four layers because yeah, it, because yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they've they've adapted. They know, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly, exactly. I Man, in summertime they would have cabin fever. I still feel like they have cabin fever in Arizona when I lived in Arizona because people wouldn't go out to because it was too hot, basically. Right, right, yeah. The opposite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to think about for this time of year and coming forward for this year, basically. Exactly. Well, I feel like that was a pretty good synopsis. What are the things that we want to talk about? Well, we were going to talk about what? What did you, you wanted to talk about Miss Carol. What did you want to talk about with that? We can have a little fun or hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. You mm -hmm. You've seen the Christmas Carol story, right? So the Christmas Carol is like Marley's ghost and the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas present and the ghost of Christmas future. Right. Okay. And then when they retell the story, they tell it in different ways, but they always have like the same types of characters. Like the, the ghost of Christmas past is always like the female, the ghost of like a, a I would only say just, yeah. And Ghost of Christmas Present is always like a Santa-esque fi figure, right? And then the ghost of Christmas future is always death. Okay. Right, right. Right, right? Right. Um, and Telling the story of life. Yes, yes, yes. I was <laughs> And I was thinking about Christmas time, like what other stories get like so grim at Christmas time? I can't think of any other stories that get like, that are so popular. Like that's probably like one of the more grim ones that's so popular, right? Well, I think a lot of Christmas stories are both very happy, but also play on right the hardest parts of life. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a part of Christmas because Christmas really shines a light at, at everything. So like if you're lonely at Christmas, you're going to feel like super lonely at Christmas. And also if you're happy, you're going to be really happy at Christmas. And I think stories and Christmas stories, they really want to, because a story is just a short story, right? Like they want to show the hard and they want to show the good and, and the happy. This is a Christmas Carol. There is a, the a very popular one. <laughs> I can't think of right now, but let's just think of Home Alone. Like okay. Home, Home Alone yeah, 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 is yeah, a new yeah. one. And that always has, you know, the kid getting lost and all that kind of stuff. And he almost dies. But like Scrooge himself, you know, like from, a, you know, A Christmas Carol, he is great because he goes through the transformation, right? Right. 
This is also this is also because our podcast is called the Thick Quest Podcast, and I feel like we should talk about stories every once in a while. What is your favorite Christmas movie? I don't know. I was thinking Christmas Carol is like one of those ones that I crave the most around this time of year. If that makes sense, like some rendition of the Christmas Carol. I like Scrooge with Bill Murray. I haven't watched that in such a long time. I wonder how it's aged. Uh, but uh, yeah, I crave Christmas Carol, or at least it seems like it this year. Home Alone, I really like Home Alone. Right. You right. said like, yeah, one of my, t- one of my favorite ones. Obviously. How about another one, another Christmas one that goes kind of on the dark side is mm-hmm. It's a Wonderful Life. Like, and a lot of people don't really watch it nowadays, but if you have like some older grandparents that are still there, that like, that was probably like a big movie for them. Oh yeah. And I know that is, uh, you know, a big one where he, for like 95% of the movie, it's like a sad, powerfully sad movie. Bro. Mm -hmm. And then the last five minutes is like this ultimate joy and all, all this kind of stuff. And I think some Christmas movies just do that. They want to show light on that for a lot of people, Christmas time is tough. And like some of the toughest terms of the year. Magnifies things. Yeah. And it's the winter, you know? Right. Dark, cold winter. And then if you're just by yourself when all these other families are doing stuff, like that can be a tough time, I'm, uh, you know, for sure. I feel like I should say a little advertisement for our solstice party right now. Since our podcast isn't too big, like oh. if someone's listening to this and I, we know each other, you can, you can hit me up to let you know about the solstice party. We usually just do the campfire, but this year it's going to be on a Saturday, which would be nice because it makes it easier for people to come. We'll have a campfire. We won't be having any sacrificial rituals. There's no taking rituals going on or anything like that. I feel like when I say there's going to be a solstice party, but we like doing like a campfire on the darkest night of the year, like an excuse to do a big campfire. Oh, yeah. Is is there any other rituals that are part of the solstice, like having like certain drinks or certain food or anything like that? Well, we'll usually have a warm cider in a crock pot kind of thing going and s'mores type things, things you can roast over the fire, cook over the fire. Some people will write down things to get rid of or to work towards for the the new sun cycle kind of thing. Um, Well, well, winter is normally would be the giving away, right? And spring would be the growing. So yeah, I think it's things they're giving away. Yeah. Kind of. I, while you're talking, I'll ask Chad. And, and then you burn it, you write it down, and then you throw it in the fire. <laughs> Is that right? I, you know, I've never been to one of these parties, so, you know, I don't know. I don't know if there's like a strict theme for them. <laughs> we just started doing it just to honestly have like a big campfire in the day, you know, and do something for people to get together around that time. Yeah. The darkest night of the year. <laughs> you know, it's also fun too. I want to get our telescope out. And see if we can do some stargazing if it's not too cloudy. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That would be fun. Yes. So if you're listening. And that brings it back to what we were talking about earlier, which is like, I have to convince myself to do it sometimes, but if I make it more fun, I don't need to convince myself. That's true. That's Part true. Of convincing myself is making it more fun. True, true. You're like, you just stack some things up for you. You, you, yeah. have to, you have to add to it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You got to put like a cherry on it. Some people need a cherry. I need a cherry on top, but I know I need a cherry on top and I know the benefits I get from it. So then it, it becomes easier as I do it. That's true. Like to go outside for some people might be really hard, right? You know, mm-hmm. even if it's cold or whatever. So a little reward might not yeah. hurt. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying there's lots of things like, uh, cherry filled kisses right now that are at, like, that are like at stores because holidays, there's some really good candy out there. Oh, is that like a seasonal thing? Yeah. It's like a seasonal one. And then, man, so after a long walk in the cold, you can just pop one of those. It's not bad. It's like 50 calories. 50 calories, not too bad. And you've know, been seeing a lot is those, uh, Christmas tree, Debbie, uh, little Debbie Christmas trees. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a big one. Big one. 
20 years since I've had one of those. Yeah. I just plant, plant the seed then, little Debbie Christmas trees. They're very, very cakey, like yellow cake. You have like yellow cake in, in a thing with frosting. Okay. Other Christmas movies that you watch every year? What's other Christmas movies we watch? You know, one of the new ones that's been kind of fun has been, what's his name? The one on, it's on Netflix. Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. What is that one called? Do you know? That is called Christmas Chronicles. Christmas Chronicles. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, because they have a Christmas Chronicles one and two. Kurt Russell is pretty cool. He plays kind of like a rock and roll Santa. Yes. Rock and roll Santa sounds accurate. Yeah. And then there's always like the classic, like I got to watch the Claymation Rudolph for sure. Oh yeah. Okay. I got to do that. Like that. I have to check that box. I really like watching Elf. It's just Elf is harder with the younger ones. I would say so Elf's not in the rotation as much. I might watch Elf by myself. <laughs> Do they like a Christmas story? No, they haven't really seen Christmas story. They haven't seen Home Alone. They're not really into the live action, real people, actors, stuff yet. So, except for Christmas Chronicle. Christmas Chronicle, hopefully the gateway drunk here a little bit. Well, because it has lots of uh, animated stuff that's within Christmas Chronicle. Yeah, it's like a hybrid. My kid, my kids love uh, Home Alone. All the Home Alones. There's like, there's like eight of them. There's like six or eight of them. There's a ton of them. Okay. And they just started watching regular movies too, and not cartoons. Yeah. Um, they love the Home Alones. They, I've never heard them laugh as hard as as watching some of those shows. Oh, I'm so sad. I think she's. I think Zena's really close, and I think Ari would would be cool with it. I think it's mostly like, can we get Zena to be cool with it? Basically, we're close. Have they taken slapstick comedy out of like new comedy? I don't think she's used to slapstick comedy, man. Like she does not like slapstick comedy in lots of different places. You actually, even in animated, I think that's actually a big part of it. Cause she does actually watch some like more hallmarky Christmas movies. I would think, okay. you know, that, that don't have animation in it. And they're just live actors. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's more of the sl like slapstick. She can handle a little bit when it's animated, but when it's live, she's like, oh my goodness. It's the it's kind of they're alive. They can't do that. Awesome. Uh, did they do that? Too? I think one of my like favorites to watch with the family is the Polar Express. Yeah. Okay. I like yeah. the Polar Express. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. The bell. Oh, yeah. The bell's big. You know what's awesome? When we go to Harper's Ferry for Cuba Christmas, which is this Sunday, by the way. Right. There's the best Santa at Harper's Ferry Tuba Christmas, by the way. They'll be playing the music, and he'll come walking down the old Harper's Street with Mrs. Claus, and they'll give out bells to the kids. Oh, that's really cool. And take pictures with them. And he's got a really nice outfit. And looks like it was well made and like bell and bell. Natural beard and Mrs. Claus is all <laughs> like in Victorian style. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I went with you like three years ago, maybe. We, yeah. We talked about it or did it at one point. No, I, I went there because they do the band like yeah. across the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and then Santa Claus was down in one of the stores and really done really well. And yeah, I remember, I don't think I brought Charlie. So I think it was like three years ago. Yeah. So it probably when he might've been really, really little. And that is a cool town, and it is really cool at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get on to that. How do we get on to that from, from flapstick comedy to that? Well, that's what the random show is all about. Yes. Yeah. Do we have a, So we're almost finished here with the random show. Is there anything else you wanted to, like, talk about? Have you seen Charlie Brown Christmas? Yes. Yes. 
Do you know, do I tell you about Xena and Charlie Brown Christmas play? A little bit. Yeah. I'm excited little... about that. So we're almost done with that this weekend. I was thinking Fit Quest has been kind of hard this week. You want to do a little Fit Quest update real quick? Do that real quick. Go ahead. Fit Quest has been a little bit hard these last two weeks because the kids have been sick. And um, and they just got sent Thanksgiving and they really just got better um, because like right before Zena had to start doing her play and doing the performances for her play. And she had five performances Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the first weekend. And then she's got five more performances this coming weekend. Yeah. And she had a whole bunch of rehearsals before all that. So like time is crazy, like eating up to it. And then also the kids being sick. So like the first week they were sick, I wasn't able to work out that much. And then getting back into the workout was mostly stretching and moving around. This is why I was thinking it would be useful to share with people. Cause I think a good amount of people going through recovering from sickness. Basically. Yeah. So yeah. first week wasn't able to work out that much, but tried to kind of like keep that craving high for yeah. the workout, you know? Right. And then second week, just started doing some stretches, doing some foam foam roller. I really like doing after being sick, um, right? Because so, it's kind of like just getting a massage, trying to take some longer showers or baths, some heat, get some moisture, take my vitamins, all that kind of stuff. Halfway through the second week, did like a fifty percent workout, you know, and then fun. The time the third week came around, did a full workout, felt really sore, but felt really good. And then did another full workout. A couple days after, felt better. Back in back into it today, actually, too. Got another workout. In the books coming in today. Awesome, man. Sweet. And and so mainly indoor stuff. Well, the one thing that I really like about that is that first week. Like when things happen, you know, you get too busy, maybe you get a little sick, your kids get sick, you can't do anything. Now, I'm not saying when you're super sick, but I think a good strategy is just taking 30 minutes that you would normally give to your workout and, and, and whatever that means to you, maybe that means getting out of bed because you've been sick in bed, go downstairs, make your own glass of water instead of having the kids grab it for you, walk out on the back deck and have a, a big breath out there and just for 30 minutes and then go back to being sick. I get that. But I think just keeping that habit every day and then the following week, exactly what you did, maybe do some stretching, maybe do a couple little things that you can do. And then the third week, you know, gear back up. And that might happen three times over the course of the five month winter period. And I think it's a really good skill to be able to get back on the horse as quick as possible when it comes to like you're working out or anything like that. Yeah. I think because I've gotten back on the horse enough times, like I have a routine and a, a checklist to kind of go through. And I think yeah. that's something hard for people who haven't established that yet. But it yeah. doesn't have to be something hard. It can be something similar. Most of them are pretty similar to, I would say, what I did there, right? Take it easy, but still try and move a little bit. Try to keep the craving high by getting in a little bit of movement where you can, when you can, or even just like thinking about extra exercise if you keep moving around a lot. And then just the go, third... go stare at your squat rack. I, I wish I could use you. <laughs> but maybe write a poem about it. <laughs> Exactly. Ideally. But what about you, how did pick quests been there? Oh, oh, so it's gotten cold. So this year I moved my gym to the garage and, yeah. and yeah, cold it garage. Just cold, man. I'll run the heater and maybe by like 4 PM in the day it's warm, but so pretty much I, I moved yoga inside. So I'm doing six days of yoga. My, I've been doing walks pretty much every day. So 1.8 mile walk in the cold or whatever, really trying to get used to the cold because I've been really cold out there. So, right. You been doing any cold showers? Uh, no, I, it, it's cold inside, Mike, uh, hot showers. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> Who's gonna carry the boats though, Josh? Who's gonna carry the boats if you don't if you don't take those cold shockers? Exactly. And I've been doing some push-ups and some little dumbbell work, but not a whole lot. But maybe two or three days a week. I took such a long break from lifting this year, like maybe four months. And I'm feeling pretty good after push-ups. Like my muscles kind of like coming back a little bit just from push-ups, which is like pretty, uh, kind of like wild me. I think that's just because I trained for like 10 years, pretty much nonstop, even though I would cycle in and out of dumbbell presses and bench presses and push-ups and kind of in that cycle, I think there was some real benefit to taking such a long time off from lifting for my adaptation that I'm going to play around with slowly over the next like three months because it is cold and I'm going to be inside. So I have to figure out some things to do inside. Have you ever had like a body weight strength phase? Oh yeah, of course. What did you think the difference between like the body weight strength phase and the like lifting phase was? What were some big differences? I wanted to What I like about the, like, so there's a different kind of control when you're doing a push up compared to grabbing a bar and doing a bench press. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a push up, I'm not saying you don't engage your whole body during a bench press. Mm -hmm. but a push up, there's more muscles that you're engaging and just the general shakiness like that, that comes from lifting and things like that kind of, I, I feel more in control after a, after a phase of body weight stuff, mm -hmm. than a phase of, of, you know, barbell or, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I would say that. I'm not always less sore. Definitely not. I mean, push-ups can definitely make you sore and like body weight squats and things like that. Yeah. One of my favorite things doing that I've done in the body weight phase, man, I did this 12 week one. So three, four week phases, all body weight, pretty much the same stuff. You know, uh, I used to do a lot of dips, man. I haven't done dips in years. I got up to a, a weighted dip of a hundred pounds, which mm -hmm. I was excited about. I probably could do like five dips right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, push-ups, dips, squats, lunges. Um, I, I like like airplane RDLs, things like that. But mainly with the push-ups, dips, squats, and, the, and pull, let's add pull-ups in there. You can really do some really good slow tempo phases. So yeah. I, I, I would tempo a lot more. I would generally, I mean, I've done... Uh, uh, a regular tempo, like a two, two tempo on the first four weeks. And then the next four weeks, I would do a slow one, like a four, two, two, one type tempo, which is and like then, lowering phase, a whole one, which is green, a whole four, one, two on the bottom and then one, two up, one, two at the top, which, you know, an eight second, 10 second push up. You try to do 10 of those, you know, to <laughs> Yeah. And then I like on that, that third phase to do some more explosive, like maybe, maybe two seconds down and, and then just a one second, up. like pretty, I don't, I don't even call it one second. I just call it explode up. Right. Um, like I, in that third phase. And then you really like, I really like doing that, but uh, you know, I didn't, I only did that during a lot of my testing, maybe in my late twenties and, and stuff like that. And then I'm doing <laughs> been a while then yeah i mean i always do push-ups remember this in this podcast i was doing push-ups squats pull-ups every day right uh, for a while but uh, devoid of the other stuff you know just just body weight i think there's very, something like big there's a big difference between like just body weight you know like not even like weighted dips not even yeah. like weighted pull-ups, like you can't add weight. You can only like change the angle or change the tempo or, you know, like calisthenic style, I guess some people might yeah. say, yeah, you know. And I remember running that with clients too, like a whole four week phase of just body weight stuff. Yeah. And, and they would be like, well, they were first off, they would be like, what, what, why are we doing this? This is going to be horrible. Yeah. And then the second was more of like denial because it was so hard. 
that 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 they were like, okay, I'm sorry, man. I'm First they like, hate you, then they berate you, then they love you. Yeah, exactly. Because then they're like, you know, I kind of like this body weight stuff because you so feel good after that. Do like so many spots that have a full body weight program, and there's so many different ways that the body has to adapt, I guess, you know, that I think makes the whole system run really well. It makes sense. And, it, and it's also like a, it's more muscular endurance. I don't think we get enough muscular endurance sometimes, you know, um, and it's more like spatial awareness, I would say. There's a couple of like little areas, little lesser, it's like unsung heroes of, str of strength training that get developed really well in just the whole body weight program. Oh, yeah. And, you know? Especially if you're doing proper lowering phases or when you're doing push ups and squats and stuff like that. I mean, you can make those things work really well. And I feel like since you haven't had the uh, strength, like the weights as much lately, like you can get the, the benefits of just straight body weight. Add it onto the yoga, man. I feel pretty good right now. And it's a little, I'm doing less golf because it's so cold, but I am going to go play in like tw 30 minutes. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Are you going to play with your Santa hat on? I should. <laughs> Old enough. I'm down for January, mid January. I should look at my calendar too. You can go for it. All right. Any other thing, Fit Quest, before we go? I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Well, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'll let you know about the solstice party. All right. And then I'll message you and talk to you and stuff like that. But thank you for listening everybody. Come to the solstice party. Come to the solstice party. Thanks guys. Peace.